Terry Lynn, Traveling Artista. This video has eight basic watercolor techniques. Once I have set up my station, I have my paper on my left, my water, paints, and mixing area on my right because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, put these items on the opposite side. I start with a wet brush. I slowly work into the paint with that brush gently until I soften the paint. I pick some of it up and put it into my mixing area. I make sure it's a nice even color and then I quickly brush that onto the paper. I have these rectangles already drawn on the paper with my little old credit card there. Nice flat wash. This second wash is a graded wash. You start with a strong color, rinse out the brush, add more water, just water, and it will pull some of that pigment down below. Rinse it again, clearer water, and it pulls it a little bit more. This allows you to end up with a beautiful graded wash. Now you want to try to do these washes with determination, make a decision, get good strong color and enough to use and get it onto the paper. Be bold. Don't go picking at it. Just make a nice strong wash. You can see here it still has a sheen so it's still drying. And that yellow color on the right, my graded wash, is a little strong on the edge. I could soften that. All right, my next wash, again with a strong yellow, and I'm working it in, getting enough to cover the area that I need. I brush it on, and then I am going to be doing a wet in wet. So there's my yellow. I pick up my clean calligraphy brush. Again, works gently into some of that soft magenta, softening the paint getting it ready to use a nice little pu puddle of pigment there and I drop it in to that wet yellow paint. As you see this settle and dry you can see how it spreads out and creates a beautiful edging texture. Something that could be great for maybe flowers in the distance or bushes or a hill in the distance if you're doing a wash across so many options with this. Now I'm getting more paint, working it in evenly into the brush. I can tell on the mixing area if I need more pigment, so I go back to the palette and pick that up. I start with a nice flat wash again, bold, get it down, leave it, Then I am going to go get a piece of paper towel, crunch it up so it's irregular, and it must be dry. So I press, hold it down, blot it, and lift it up. This is a great technique to create for clouds or so many different things. Play with this texture. It's fun. Each time you touch the paint, with a paper towel, it has to be a dry part of the paper towel. Different paper towels create different textures. Even Kleenex and toilet paper can give you some interesting aspects. Now, I am rinsing out my calligraphy brush. It's nice and clean, then damp, drying it so it's slightly damp, and then I drag it across that wash and lift some of that pigment up. This creates a nice soft line of lifted paint. And here's the close-up of those four techniques. And now time for some different techniques. I'm starting with this Viridian Green, working my calligraphy brush into it well, softening the paint and mixing it on the palette to give a nice smooth consistency of the pigment. I bring it for a flat wash on the paper. Notice how it's like very even strokes, 
put it down, leave it there, cleaning my brush, turning this into a graded wash by just adding some clear water. I often clean the brush and then I, I dry it slightly on the sponge. This gives me a nice damp brush that doesn't have too much water in it. It's a control between how much water and how dry. Now again I am dragging that damp brush across and lifting up some of the pigment to give a soft line. Now I'm going back to my wide wash brush, my flat wash, and I'm taking the handle of this, which is nicely beveled, and I am going to drag it across to create a line. This scrapes the paint off the surface and leaves interesting lines. Here, I am using the sharper edge of that beveled tip and scratching the, paint, the paper. When I scratch the paper, and you'll see this better when it dries, it leaves a dent in the paper and the paint sinks into that, creating a strong dark line of that color. Here I took a little paper towel and blotted it, as we did above. Then you can take your calligraphy brush and add a little extra definition around the edge of that. Where you have blotted it, it's dry and will resist the paint. Where it's still slightly wet around the blot, it's a nice area to add some shadows in. Try to plan ahead and achieve the look and technique that you're planning and do it quickly and with confidence. I'm going now to my used toothbrush. With the toothbrush, I am going to do a splatter technique. So I get the brush, dampen it, and dry it. I'm going to pick up again some of that magenta, just gently here because the bristles on the brush are stronger, of course, than your paint brush. Make sure that the color is consistent. It seems a little dry, so I'm adding just a bit more water, water, just a touch, just a tint. And then I take my thumb and I run it across the toothbrush, splattering the color onto that flat wash above. This flat wash is now dry, so the splatters remain sharp and clear. Another splatter technique is with your calligraphy brush. Get a good amount of paint in the end of that brush and then tap the brush. Not quite wet enough. Tap the brush on your finger. Not quite wet enough again. Tap it. There we go. And now you get some splatters. This splatter is less controllable than the toothbrush, so I would practice it on a scrap paper beside first. Moving on now, I'm going to do a brush technique that they use in Japanese calligraphy painting. This works great for leaves and petals on a flower. So get your paint, work it in evenly on the palette, and then with the tip of the brush barely touching, slightly drag the brush, then press down to the fat area of the brush, and then lift and drag to the tip again. So it's tip, drag, press, lift back up to the tip. Practice this a lot. You can also curve it and do other images with this, but this is the basic brush stroke. Here I'm adding in, dropping in while it's still wet, just a little extra color to add some three-dimensionality to that, a little bit of shading. I 
I'm getting my flat wash brush now that can be very wide on one side but very thin when you turn it on the edge. I am going to double load the brush and I show this a little bit later but on one corner of the brush there is one co color and on the other corner of the brush there's a different color. So here I have the magenta and the green, lift and twist. So press the brush down and drag it, lift it up to the very tip of the brush, and then press back down again. You can also just touch that sharp razor edge of the brush to the paper, and it creates nice thin lines, great for fences or other such textures. When you're starting out, it's a great idea to practice, practice, practice all these strokes. And then you become proficient at how to use your brushes. This is kind of fun. Take a little round brush, the handle tip of it, dip that into paint, and then touch it to the paper. This will create very tiny dots which can add texture and interest into your painting. Here it is with a palette. I just gently get some paint on the end, that tip of my brush handle, and then touch it onto the paper. You can only do this a few times before the paint on the end of that brush runs out. But it's a very useful technique. Play around. Play around and have fun with this. Now to kind of use your calligraphic brush to create some trees. I'm from Maine, so I love to draw fir trees. This works with fir, spruce, kind of pine trees, almost anything. Not your deciduous trees so much. So I stay on the very tip of my calligraphic brush, drawing it up because a tree always grows up and you want to paint in the direction that something grows. The top branches reach up to the sun and are tiny and delicate. As the tree goes down, the middle branches tend to reach out and the tips up to the sun again. The heaviness of those lower branches pull them down with a little bit sometimes of the tip reaching to the sun. Play around with this, have fun. You can use this stroke for many other things as well. When I am done with the tree, this first wash, I will also pick up maybe some other color, maybe a blue, magenta, whatever, maybe burnt umber, and drop it into the area near the trunk of the tree to add shadow and depth into that little tree. I love this, it's so much fun. My last little rectangle in this section is going to have a flat wash to begin with and I'm going to use my cobalt blue here. Make a nice flat wash that you can play with. Again, finding that right balance between how much water, how much pigment, I've added a little ultramarine blue and I've allowed that magenta that was already on my palette to kind of mix in. You can, with, with practice and experience, you get, begin to figure out when the wash is right to be put on. Every paper accepts the paint differently. Every paint acts a little bit different. Experience in playing is the best way to learn how to use your watercolors. Once we have that flat wash, I'm taking a sharper, drier piece of paper towel and I'm going to blot the edge of that. 
you'll be able to see a little bit the difference between how the ultramarine blue acts with the blotted and then look up above with that cadmium yellow and how that acted with the blotted. Uh, it's, it's different. Again, each paint is a little bit different. Each paper is a little bit different. And here I'm just dropping in some shadows under that blotted texture. just have to drop in a slightly darker color and it becomes shadows. Now I'm going to use my sprayer. This is my coarse water sprayer. I always check it off to the side, check it out before I use it. I'm using my hand to cover the part of the wash that I don't want this splatter to fall on. That will protect that other area. So that's why my hand was there. You can isolate the area where you want the splatter to happen. The coarse one creates bigger dots and a stronger texture. I also have a fine misting spray bottle for water that I can just mist that upper left hand corner and it creates a slightly different texture. Once you've tried these aspects with a few different colors and a few different papers, perhaps, get comfortable with it. Then, if you have a small spray bottle of alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, see what that does in your flat wash. It can be really exciting. So here's some of those basic techniques. Any questions, you know how to reach me. My website is TravelingArtista.com and you can email me from there. Just push contact. Enjoy painting. Play, play, play. I cannot emphasize enough that you have to play with it. Enjoy and have fun creating.